Hi everyone, so it's on factorising this time using the difference of two squares uh, to factorise things. Well, what is the difference of two squares? Well, hopefully we're familiar with this idea of... That keeps happening. Hopefully we're familiar with this idea of A squared take B squared. It's A plus B, A subtract B. So this is difference of two squares. Okay, it's called that because... You've got two square numbers here, obviously, and the difference means subtract. So you've got two sets of brackets, and if you watched the previous video, or the one before, I can't remember now, um, we talked about when you expand two sets of brackets normally, so I don't know, x minus 1, uh, x plus 4 or something, you expect a two, uh, three term quadratic to come out, don't you? So something to do with x squared, something to do with x, and something to do with a number. But it's only in the case when you've got a difference of two squares that you get a two-term uh, a two-term object coming out of, of a two-bracket multiplication. Does that make sense? So if you, as long as you have a minus here, okay, anything can be split into a difference of two squares. Let me let me show you what I mean. So uh, this will help. So if I had um, a to the six subtract b to the six, okay. Because it's got a minus here, I know it's a difference of two square problem. Okay, so it can be minus and plus. And it has to be minus and plus because it's the only way for those middle terms to cancel it out. So if I go back to here. Notice if we expand this out, we get a squared, and a times minus b is minus ab. And here, if we do plus b times a, that's plus ab, and plus b times minus b is minus b squared. So notice these two middle terms cancel out, minus ab plus ab. So that's the whole point. That's what's happening. And the only way that's going to happen is if you have a difference of two signs in here. All right? Now notice a squared, you'll put in the square root of a squared in one bracket and the square root of a squared in the other bracket. So a times a makes a squared. The same logic here. So the square root of a to the 6 is a cubed, isn't it? And a cubed, because a cubed times a cubed is a to the 6. Just like b to the 6, b cubed, b cubed. You see, you have split it into a difference of two squares. And anything can be done that way. Um, 4 take away 9. I could look at that as a difference of two squares. Do you see? Two brackets plus and minus because it's got that minus there. The square root of 4 is 2 and 2 and the square root of 9 is 3 and 3. You see? So 4 minus 9 is minus 5 and that is the same as this. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 minus 3 is minus 1 and 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. So our difference of two squares can be applied to any situation where you've got a minus between two objects. So let's start doing this then. So 81 minus 9x squared can be factorized, so into difference of two squares form. Okay, so plus or minus straight away. 81 square root, it is 9, and 9. And now we need to square root 9x squared. So square root of 9 is 3, 3. And the square root of x squared is x. So there we go. Difference of two squares. Done. Let's do this next bit. So it has a minus in between, so plus and minus. Now we've got 16, so square root of 16 is 4 and 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. And now we've got this 49x squared, so let's deal with the number first. Square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of x squared is x. Okay? There we go. Next. Um, 8 minus x. So this links with what we were talking about before. Okay, there's a minus in here. So in theory, this can be split into a difference of two squares. You've got 8. <coughs> so we need the square root of 8 in both brackets in order to, uh, when they times each other, for them to produce 8. So you could write square root of 8 in here and square root of 8 in here, okay, and x, you've got square root of x, square root of x, okay, but you know, root 8, that's the same as, we might as well use test out our indices, our uh, third stuff, 
So that's root 2 times root 4, isn't it? And that's 2 times root 2. So you could write this as 2 root 2 plus root x times by 2 root 2 minus root x. Okay? Now, part D, x to the 4 minus y to the 4, it has a minus in there. So hopefully we recognize we need plus or minus. x to the 4 square root, it is x squared x squared, y to the 4 square rooted, y squared, y squared. Now, hopefully, you can see, ah, there's another minus here. Does that mean that this can be uh, factorized again, you know? And yes, in theory, we could just keep factorizing anything with a minus. You see, that can be split up again if we got a minus here. For this one, it makes sense to split it up again. Um, you got it. This is now in the form of a squared minus b squared, isn't it? So can you see? You could write that down as x and x plus or minus, and there's a square root of y squared is y and y. So you could keep going as long as there's a minus there. And again, we could keep going if we wanted to, um, but only go as far as you need or the question asks. Okay, end the video. End the video.